بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد روي عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أنه قال أربع من السعادة أربعة أشياء تجلب السعادة للإنسان السعادة في هذه الدنيا يكون سعيد من متممات السعادة four things that make people serene and happy in this in their life four things what are they المرأة الصالحة to have a righteous wife the hadith does not say having a beautiful wife the hadith says having a righteous wife to have a beautiful wife that's not an assurance for happiness Someone may have a beautiful wife, but that's no guarantee that things will go well between them. But the hadith says, if you have a righteous wife, a decent wife, a good wife, that will bring happiness, that will bring stability to your house. That's why we are always advised not to be fooled by physical appearance. On both sides, on both sides, women should not be tricked with the physical appearance of a man who looks handsome, but he is empty from inside, and vice versa. A man should not be deceived by the physical appearance of a woman. The Prophet ﷺ says, Iyakum. Beware of the greenery in the dumpster. What is a greenery under the dumpster? قالوا وما خضراء الدمن يا رسول الله. قال المرأة الحسناء في منبت السوء. He was asked, what is the greenery on the dumpster? He says, a beautiful woman, but not from a decent origin you were of her in other words do not be fooled by the physical appearance rather focus on the inner qualities is she humble is she down to earth is she obedient is she caring is she uh, loving those are the qualities we need to seek. But to be tricked by physical appearance, physical beauty will take you nowhere. Al Mar'atu Salih, that's number one. Things that bring happiness and stability to your life. Al Mar'atu Salih. Number two, Wal Maskan al Wasa. I have a comfortable house. To have a spacious house. Also that brings happiness and stability. Imagine if I have a big family. Seven, eight children. And I have only one bedroom or two bedrooms in my house. That will be extremely difficult. I need to have enough room for myself. And for my children. So they can feel comfortable at home. So having a spacious house is a good thing. Islam is not against having a comfortable house. Islam never says you cannot live in a good and comfortable house. No. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لَعِبَادِهِ Who said good things are haram for the good people? No. As long as I am Fulfilling all my responsibilities before myself, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before people, I can enjoy a beautiful house, a big house, spacious house. If I have enough money and cash, what do I need my money for if I'm not comfortable with my family? If my family is not comfortable, what do I need money for? 
Some people accumulate money, but they choose to live in a very small, tiny house. So what do you accumulate money for? If you're not enjoying your cash, if you're not enjoying your wealth, what's the point of possessing wealth? Islam says, go ahead and buy a big house, spacious house. Comfortable for yourself and for your family members, where your kids feel comfortable, spacious enough for everybody in the house. They can breathe, they can move. Number three, to have a good neighbor. If your neighbor is not good, <laughs> He may put you through misery. He may make your life miserable. That's why Islam says, take care of your neighbors. Don't bother them. Do not abuse them. Don't cause so much noise that they are disturbed. Don't spy on them. Don't be too nosy to know what is going on in their house? Sometime you're stuck with a neighbor who is nosy, fuduli. He wants to know who came to your house. What did you cook today for dinner? What did you cook for lunch? And watching you 24-7 and basically making life miserable for you. When they turn the music, they turn it on the highest volume. Or sometimes they have a sahra at their backyard. They are so loud. Don't do this. Always watch your neighbors. Be respectful to them. Be accommodating. Laysa minna. The Prophet says he is not a true Muslim. Man yakhsha jaruhu bawa'iqah. He's not from us. He's not a true Muslim whose neighbor is always bothered by him. If you throw stone on your neighbor's dog, this is a breach. This is a violation of your neighbor. Don't. Always be nice to them. Be kind to them. Treat them with respect and dignity. Do not harass them. Never, never at all fight with your neighbor over a parking space. Unfortunately, some people do that. They fight with their neighbors over parking space. Why did you park in the front of my house? So what if he parked in the front of your house? By the way, if he parks in, your, in front of your house in the street, this is not yours. Yeah, he can't park in your driveway. But if he parks in the street, this is not yours. Some people in our community, they make an issue with someone parking right before their house. As if he owns the whole neighborhood. but if I do a majlis in my house, I'm not supposed to bother my, my neighbor. I'm not supposed to make my neighbor uncomfortable. Some people have majlis in their house during Ashura or other event. And when people come to their house to participate in the majlis, they block people's way. They block the neighbor's way. You cannot do this. You can't. 
You can have a majlis for yourself, but you cannot bother people. Tantahi hurriyatuk, haythu tabda hurriyatul akhirin. Intahur fi tasarraf, ma dam, ma ta'zi ahad. Yes, freedom has limit. You cannot infringe on other people's freedom because you are simply exercising your freedom. We need to let people have access to their homes when they enter. You cannot block their house because, well, I have a majlis or I have a sbu' or I have majlis aza at my house. So what? Always you need to watch how your neighbor feel. If he feels not so comfortable, this is your problem. So, وَجَّارُ الصَّالِحِ To have a good neighbor. In the contrast, if you have a good neighbor, good neighbor would watch over your house, or watch over your family, they are courteous. They sometimes help when you are in need of help. Having a good neighbor is one factor of happiness. Because your neighbor can make you comfortable or can make you miserable. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمَ ما زال جبرائيل يوصيني بالجار حتى ظننت أنه سيورث جبرائيل on behalf of God kept on pressing me pressing me on being good to my neighbors so much so that I thought maybe my neighbor will inherit me just like my family members so a neighbor need to be respected need to be accommodated if your neighbor reaches out to you if he needs something don't say no don't say no today they have guests they are short of say rice they come to you they tell you you know what we need some rice on emergency basis. Can you? Today we have guests. Can we use your drive uh, driveway? Don't be bothered with doing them any good thing, any being kind to them. The fourth thing, Al Amr al Rabi' min al Sa'adah. موجبات السعادة المركب الهني to have a good transportation to have a car that takes you to work and bring you without stopping ten times in the road but remember the prophet says المركب الهني comfortable transportation he wouldn't say المركب الفاخر he wouldn't say to be happy or to make you happy is to have a luxurious transportation to own Mercedes Benz or Porsche or I don't know the names 400,000 500,000 that doesn't make you really happy that doesn't make you happy what makes you happy is to have a good car that takes you home and brings you back without stopping the street it doesn't have to be luxurious. It doesn't have to be that expensive. Sometimes people do not calculate well. I'm not saying it's haram, but for me to throw $300,000 in my car, what's for? When I can have a car, a good car with 10% of that price, 10%. I can buy a good car with 10% of that price and I give the rest 
to the poor. I give it to charity. I give it to the orphans. You don't have to drive a car that's worth 300,000. What is going to make me better if I drive a more expensive car? Does it going to make me feel better? Does it going to elevate my status in the community? Will people have more respect to me? No. Whether I drive $10,000 car or $500,000, the, communi the community will see me through the same lenses. I am the same person. What changes me in the people's eyes and in, in God's eyes is my akhlaq, my attitude, not my car. Not my car. Don't waste so much time, money so you can tell people, here I am, I am a very wealthy person. If I can buy a watch that's worth $200 and it is good and it helps me knowing the time, why then I spend $10,000 on my watch? What's for? What do I get out of this? No. Some people... In order to tell others that I am wealthy, I'm a big shot. No, I'm, wa I'm wearing a $10,000 watch. Again, I'm not here to say it is haram. If it's your money, if it's not stolen, if you did not earn this money through fraud and a scam, that's yours. You can do that, no problem. But it is morally, morally wrong to put excessive amount of cash on things that I don't need in order for me to go home and enjoy my ride. I don't need $300,000. To watch my time, I don't need $10,000. I can use $300, $500 on my watch, $30,000 on my car, and invest the rest of my money in something that is good for the community, for the good of the community, for the good of the society. There are many people who are in need of the money I throw on things that are not so necessary. I can give part of it. You don't want to give, donate? Lend. Let people borrow your money. What's the big deal? Someone may borrow this money from you. He can open a business and then he returns the money to you. المشكلة بعض الناس يعيش في دائرة ضيقة دائرة أنا أنا بس يفكر بنفسه سيارتي بيتي راحتي ملابسي ساعتي أنا 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 ما يخصني في الناس ناس شو يصير فيهم أنا ما يمني في مشكلة في المجتمع أو لا أنا ما خصني ما دام أنا مرتاح عم أكل منيح وأشرب منيح وأركب منيح أنا خلاص هذا همي هذا همي في الدنيا الإنسان هو عنصر هو قطر في محيط هذا المحيط اسمه الإنسانية وحسبك داء أن أنتبيت ببطنة أمير المؤمنين يقول من أكبر الأمراض ليس السرطان وليس الأيدز وليس الأمراض الشائعة من أكبر الأمراض عند الإنسان أن ينام شبعانا بطنه ممتلئة وجاره وحوله أناس يحنون إلى القد ما عندهم قد يعني القد شو هو؟ القد هو اللحم النيء كان العرب يجففوه بالشمس ويأكلوه يعني هذا ما عنده إلى درجة حتى قد ما يقدر يأكل خبز ما عنده يأكل وحسبك داء أن تبيت ببطنة وحولك أكباد تحن إلى القد It's a big sickness It's a big illness to go to my bed at night with my stomach full while there are people who cannot even afford some bread. Some bread. This is sickness. This is a true sickness. 
It's called selfishness. It's called narcissism. When I love myself so much, every person in life loves himself. Don't get me wrong. But when I love myself too much, excessively, it becomes a problem. كل إنسان يحب ذاته. ما في إنسان ما يحب ذاته. ولكن بعض الناس يتضخم هذا الحب لأنفسهم إلى درجة لا يرى إلا نفسه بس بس هو فقط الناس يصير فيهم أنا ما خصني يا عمي هذا عائلة فقية أنا شو خصني خلي يروحون للولفر يأخذون يا عمي مو أنت الله معطيك معطيك أكثر من حاجتك خذ الذي تريد الله قال لك أنا أعطيتك خمسة خذ أربعة إلك وأعطي واحد للفقير لا لا هذا الفقير خلي يروح يبلط البحر هكذا بعض الناس لا يفكر إلا بمصلحته هو براحته هو بلذته هو أما الناس الفقراء فقراء أنا شيء خصنا فيه بخلي الله يطعميهم صحيح الله يطعميهم بس الله قال لك أنت أنا خليت رزقهم في جيبتك جبت رزقهم إليك أنت لازم توصل لهم على كل حال نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يوفقنا لما يحب ويرضى وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين Thank you.